Meghan publicly feuded with the royal family on TV. UK smear campaign is being launched. Hello friends, welcome to the breaking news of the notoriously treacherous couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Early in 2021, Oprah Winfrey conducted a two-hour interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. When questioned about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's appearance on Oprah Winfrey's show, royal author and award-winning journalist Tina Brown said she thinks it is rarely a smart idea to speak about a family conflict on television. The Palace Papers author Ms. Brown gave a special talk on Thursday night, uncovering royalty at City University of London. The journalist was questioned about Meghan's choice to discuss her difficulties as a working member of the firm in a two-hour sit-down interview with Oprah Winfrey, which was originally broadcast by U.S. channel CBS on March 7th of last year. A comparable action, according to Ms. Brown, isn't necessarily a smart idea, since it sows divisiveness that's difficult to reverse, she continued. The Duke and Duchess made scathing claims of neglect and bigotry against the firm in their conversation with Ms. Winfrey. The late Queen Elizabeth II notably expressed her alarm over the topics brought up in the interview, especially those of race, in a statement sent by Buckingham Palace almost 48 hours after it had originally aired. The statement also said, While some accounts may differ, the family takes them very seriously and will address them in private. As I stated at the outset, what matters is not so much what you say as what other people have heard you say. Furthermore, it has a will of its own. Every soundbite has the potential to be released and just blasted out in all of these various ways, feeding everyone's rage and discontent until it grows into this enormous beast that you are powerless to manage. Prior to her speech, the former editor of Vanity Fair and Tattler magazine had warned against Prince Harry's impending memoir, stating that even if its material turned out to be generally benign, it may harm his relationship with the rest of the firm. The statements of Ms. Brown have attracted much attention from the audience. Most expressed displeasure at Meghan's use of words when she called her relationship with the royal family hatred. One person said, The feud mostly did not exist. It was lies and exaggeration by Harry and Meghan. The Queen said some recollections may vary. Harry and Meghan were motivated by money. It was all part of their plan to make up a scandalous story. Meghan was aware of Wallace Simpson and Edward VIII, Meghan wore a dress almost identical to the style of Wallace Simpson on Oprah. That, to me, shows premeditation to imitate their story. Interesting that she chose to appear identical to Wallace Simpson, who at the time was one of the most reviled women in the UK and Commonwealth for causing the abdication. Like her whoppers on Oprah Winfrey's interview, for a supposedly educated woman, she certainly lacks the ability to separate fact from fiction. A foreign audience commented harshly about Meghan. Just going to say everyone in the UK thought Meghan Markle would be like a breath of fresh air to the royal. Watching the wedding here in Australia, I was suspicious from the second I saw her and her mother in the wedding car waving to everyone. She looked like it was all one big act. The question is, who drops their mother off halfway to the church? And who rejects the offer from the future king to walk them down the aisle, requesting to meet halfway? Last but not least, the fake look of love at the altar, not a bit genuine, and the miserable look on Harry's face. Poor boy, he must have been standing there, feet steadfast to the floor, thinking, what in the world am I doing here? Regretting every second. And the rest is history. Obviously, it was not an interview. It was not a discussion. It was simply Megan telling tales of woe and pity party without anyone asking her how, who, when, where, and why. 
whatever she spouted was taken at face value. The biased tribal thinking U.S. media run with her tales and launched a smear of an international campaign against the U.K. and the British royal family. They were aided and abetted by other people with a bone to pick with the West, or simply something to divert their population's attention from the local economic situation, or a power grab slogan to placate the uneducated and the politically unsophisticated. Contrary to convention and general consensus, it was a case of guilty until you prove your innocence. All this is because she is an American. Oprah has a lot to answer for and should be made accountable for giving an unwell woman a worldwide platform to spout her venom, anger, and resentment towards a country and a family who initially welcomed her with open arms, then realized her illness and did not bow to her unentitled and unreasonable demands. Ms. Brown said, even if the book is allegedly innocent, all it takes is one sentence to cause trouble in the present society and on social media. When Sarah, Duchess of York, published her autobiography, she extolled the virtues of Diana, Princess of Wales. She said in one of her stories that she had stolen Diana's shoes and they had given her warts. The connection between her and Diana was severed and the situation was over. Thus, all it takes is one story to get the media's attention. The Duke of Sussex said in July of last year that he was writing an intimate biography that will detail every aspect of his public life from his early years to becoming a parent. Royal watchers and sources are concerned that the Duke may include additional allegations and criticism of the royal family in his book as a result of this revelation. Following the announcement, the book's publisher, Random House, as well as the royal, have kept their identities secret. Harry has only stated that he is eager for people to read a personal account of my life that is factual and totally honest. The memoir is scheduled to be published provisionally in late 2022. However, earlier this year, sources suggested the publishing may be postponed until next year, particularly in light of the Queen's passing in September. Harry simply said he was excited for people to read a first-hand account of my life that's accurate and wholly truthful. If you are stating this, the fact that you're trying to tone it down or change it doesn't make it wholly truthful, does it? It looks like it's just a bunch of lies, just like the Oprah interview and Finding Freedom. Megan is a snake, no surprise there. That is the reason for the interview, cold-blooded revenge from a cold-blooded person. What do you think about the family feud with Meghan Markle's husband's family? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.